let me say good morning to everybody, and I'm excited to be here. I'm going to pray in a moment, but I want to say that I'm excited about the campaign of John Horn. Right. And, yeah. uh, and I know that he is going to absolutely do a wonderful job for the city of Jackson, the most qualified candidate for this job, hands down. Man. With that, let me pray. Father, we just thank you so much for a beautiful day that you've given to us and a wonderful day for a great announcement for this city. Lord, we thank you for John Horn. We thank you for his wife and his family. We thank you that he has put himself in a position that he wants to give leadership to this city. And thank you, Lord, that you have put that on his heart and mind. For we know that Jackson will be a better place. Bless this time and this announcement today. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let me say that I, I am very, very pleased to bring next to this podium the wife of the candidate and I believe the next first lady of the city of Jackson, Miss Gail Horn. Great morning. We are so thankful this morning to have you all out supporting us. Thank you for your confidence. Thank you for your love. And we're going to win this race. Thank you. And we'll see you on the campaign trail. Well, we come to that time. It gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce the next mayor of the city of Jackson, Mississippi, John Horn. Thank you so much, Bishop. And I want to thank all of my friends, my family, my supporters for being here today. I especially want to thank my father, uh, Mr. Charlie Horn, who is an icon in the state of Mississippi for the work that he's done for the people all of his life. He is a man who has done tremendous work for, for the, the workers of Mississippi and for helping people to become uh, more educated and better educated in the political process. I also want to thank my mother-in-law. You couldn't have a better mother-in-law than Charlene Cole. Granny, we love you so much, Granny. And she is a, a woman of letters and a woman who has a lot of culture and understanding of her heritage, and we love her so much. I also would like to thank, in addition to Bishop Crudup, uh, for coming out and speaking on my behalf today. I'd like to thank the presence of Reverend Buckley. Hey. Reverend Reginald Buckley. And Reg Reginald Buckley. Uh, is the pastor of Cage Chapel Baptist Church right down the way here and they are the partner with a private developer for this facility that we happen to be standing on right now and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But right now would you please join me in a moment of silence in honor of our deceased Mayor Lumumba. Thank you. I've asked you here today to announce that I am placing my name before the people to be the next mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. Last evening, I sent out an email to a number of my friends expressing my intentions and a good friend of mine named Carol wrote back, can't believe you're doing this, but I'm with you if this is what you want. Without having her say it, I knew she was mindful of two things. One was that the job of being mayor of Jackson is very hard and very difficult, to say the least. The second was that she knew that her friend was going to be the subject of much criticism because of a heavily reported story of being charged with driving under the influence of alcohol several months ago. I've had more than a few rocks thrown my way. And over the, the next several weeks, I expect my opponents and their supporters to hurl even more stones. And to be honest, 
I've probably thrown some of the biggest rocks at myself for even being in this situation. So why would I put myself out here like this? The answer is that I love Jackson, Mississippi. I've dedicated my life to Jackson. In some ways, I think I'm a living example of the way Jackson is. Yes, sometimes I've stumbled along the way. But I've always been able to get back up, dust myself off, and find my way forward. And my successes far outweigh the rocks and bumps I've encountered along the way. I know that this experience has made me a much better person. I've been humbled by it, and I've been blessed by it. Most of all, I'm thankful for my wife and my family's support, the support of my church and the support of my community. A lot of you have been praying for me. And believe me, those prayers are much appreciated. And I hope you will continue to pray for me and hold my hand while I run this race. This race is about deliverance. Who has delivered for the city of Jackson? That's right. Who can and will deliver for Jackson as we push our way forward? When you think about who the next mayor of Jackson should be, I hope that you will remember John Horn. Because no one else in this race can match my experience or my accomplishments. That's right. For over 20 years as a state senator, I have delivered for the people of Jackson. I hope you'll think about me the next time you're in McDade's at Westland Plaza or Food Depot on Northside Drive. I recruited those grocery stores back into our community to give folks a decent place to shop. I hope you'll think about John Horn next time you drive the JSU Metro Parkway. That was my first major piece of legislation. I hope you'll remember the next time you're in the telecom center at the Jackson Convention Center. I was the author of that legislation. Next time you're near the Coliseum, I hope you'll look on top of the hill and think of John Horn as you see the Civil Rights and History Museums going up. I played a key role in getting those projects funded. And in a few weeks, I hope you'll think of me when we break ground on a $50 million four-star hotel by Weston because I helped the county of, of Hines get $20 million from the state for that effort. I know what it means to find a job for somebody who has limited skills and training and who may find their meals at the nearest soup kitchen. I understand the value of culture and the arts and how they round out the whole community and the importance of the creative economy to making Jackson a great place to live, to work, and to play. I know my, my way around the corporate boardrooms to put deals together, whether it's negotiating with Nissan to put more black suppliers on their team, or convincing one of the most successful brands of hotels that they need to build one of their four-star hotels in Jackson, Mississippi. I recognize the importance of incentives in creating high-quality yet affordable housing in struggling neighborhoods. In fact, we are standing on the site here at Cade Courtyard of such a project, which I helped to develop. A $14 million, three-story, 81-unit housing development that is fully occupied with a waiting list of over 60 people. I'm a student of history. And I know its importance in teaching our young people the value of their heritage. Whether it's by building the only state-sponsored civil rights museum in the United States, or putting a curriculum in place to make sure our children are exposed to and learn the value of their, their place in the world. I have worked in the federal arena, and I'm familiar with how to access grants and loans from federal agencies that deal with health and human services, roads, senior services, job training, and public safety. This may sound as if I'm bragging, and I don't like to brag, 
I'd much rather just get the job done. But I'm simply trying to tell my story and why good leadership is key. Jackson is finding its way again. There's a new vitality in our city. The economy is looking up. Investors are coming back. People are energized. They're getting excited about Jackson again. New housing is being built. Hotels being planned. Commercial enterprises are exploring how they can grow and expand. We are developing very near here a health care corridor and health care zones to turn solutions for our ailments into better outcomes for our citizens, as well as economic opportunities for our institutions and our entrepreneurs. But to continue our way forward will require effective, experienced, seasoned leadership. None of this will be possible without a serious and effective effort on crime prevention. No visitor and certainly no resident of the city of Jackson should feel that they are not safe within our city limits. We must equip our law enforcement agencies with the tools and incentives they need to do their job. And that includes better pay, better training and equipment, and a new attitude about our approach to crime fighting. Crime prevention is not just a policeman's job, it's everybody's job. And we will exhaust every avenue to give people the comfort of knowing they can sleep securely in their beds, safely operate their businesses, and drive the streets of Jackson without fear of attack or intimidation. Speaking of streets, I was the author of the one cent sales tax. The legislation that was passed in 2011, and for two and a half years, our city fathers refused to put it up for a vote. I want to commend late Mayor Lumumba, however, who was not a fan initially, for changing his mind and embracing the one cent sales tax. Yeah. While it is not a total solution for, to our streets and our water sewer problems, the $300 million it will generate is a great start on the way forward for Jackson. No one wants their kids in an education system that is failing or at risk of failure. We will work with educators, parents, and students to improve our school system. One of my great honors was being named an outstanding alumnus of Jackson Public Schools. We must reinvest our time and resources in ensuring that every student has an opportunity to succeed in JPS, that we reduce the dropout rate and, and improve the overall performance of students in school. Our youth are entrepreneurial, they are creative, and hungry for opportunity. And we must do everything we can to provide that for them. And finally, Many of Jackson's problems and opportunities rest with the spirit of Jacksonians. Our faith-based community must play a vital role in moving Jackson forward. The leadership and resources of our churches must be fully engaged in whatever progress is achieved in Jackson. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all of this is not empty rhetoric or the voice of inexperience or the voice of do-nothing leadership. I've been down the path, and I understand the way forward. The way forward is you and I, us, together. I call on all Jacksonians to join me as we find our way forward. The way forward is proven leadership. The way forward is experience. The way forward is battle-tested and road-ready. The way forward is having done our homework. The way forward is ideas that work. The way forward is established relationships. The way forward is successful decision-making. The way forward is being willing to adopt new approaches. Please join me as we find our way forward. Thank you, may God bless you to every one of you.
be happy to respond to any questions folks might have. John, you, you alluded to it, so we, uh, well, let's address it. What do you say to voters about the DUI arrest, and why do you believe that's a reason they should not be concerned in choosing you as mayor? Well, I say about the DUI arrest that I'm going to face it forward. And I look forward to my day in court, and we'll let the chips fall where they may. Do you think right. it will overshadow your accomplishments that you just talked about? Well, we're going to let the people decide that. I think that the people of Jackson are more concerned about somebody putting a gun in their face and robbing them, or somebody breaking into their homes, or somebody stealing their cars, or somebody breaking into their businesses. I think that's what the people of Jackson are concerned about in this election and in this city. Then you're DUI. More concerned about that than you're Yes, I do. You talked about Mayor Lamova. Are you saying that you had to convince him to go with this 1% sales tax statute? I didn't have to convince him. Mayor Lumumba, when he was a city council member, was pretty adamant in his opposition to the 1% sales tax. But Mayor Lumumba, Councilman Lumumba became Mayor Lumumba. And to his credit, when he became mayor, he looked at the landscape, I believe, and saw that this 1% sales tax was the path forward. What do you say about this crowd in a lot of people running. I'm the best man in the race. That's what I say about it. Why this time? Why now? This is like a spiritual journey for me, really. Uh, and you know, I think the Lord puts things in your way to make you appreciate and to humble you sometimes. But I know. In, 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 in my heart of hearts that this is the thing for me to do. I can sit back and, and, and stay out of the limelight and, and stay out of the, the line of fire. But I love and I believe in Jackson. And I'm doing it as a, as a sacrifice for the people of this city and for this great city. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. As my wife said, we'll see you on the campaign trail.